Hey guys, it's Zach, and today I'm finally going to get to run our new 2730 John Deere Ripper. <laughs> This thing is obviously in working condition. We've run this thing over about 1,300 acres so far already this year. We fought with a lot of mud. We fought with a lot of snow. We fought with a lot of frost. We fought with the frost going out. And this thing has run straight for probably close to two weeks now. I don't work for John Deere. I'm not a John Deere mechanic or anything like that. So I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty positive that this is a completely new frame. I know that the machine itself is about twice the size of what that 2700 was. So a few things to start with here. Up front, we've got the uh, discs here. These discs go through and they cut up the stocks really well. Um, they are bigger than the ones were on the 2700. Uh, we can adjust the pressure on those, we can adjust the depth, and they do a really good job of breaking up that top few inches of dirt and kind of tearing up the stocks and anything heavy or anything kind of long that could get bound up in the rest of the machine. back the tires these are massive massive tires compared to what the 2700 was the 2700 we did have some issues uh, we were getting flat tires on that fairly frequently uh, two three even four a year sometimes these tires we have had no problems with these are ten times the tire that that 2700 had which is probably necessary because this is about ten times the machine Clearly the rims are a little bit dirty. I'm not gonna wash those before I go out and take it through the mud some more, but these tires are huge. These are really a huge improvement in my mind. Uh, next, as we move on back to the shanks, this is a nine shank ripper here. Uh, I know you can get them in 11, you can maybe even get them in a 13. I could be wrong, again, I don't work for deer, but this one is a nine. Uh, you can also get this machine up to, I believe, 26 feet wide. This one is 18. When you get wider than this, they start folding the shanks up. So you add a lot of cost to it, uh, but again, you can get it a lot bigger. So that will add quite a bit also. So there's nine shanks down here. And one thing I really like is the shape of these shanks. They've got this uh, sort of wedged front to them to help reduce compaction and help throw the dirt easier so it's not wearing on the shank so bad. I really do like the look of that. Uh, the points are the exact same point we were running on the 2700. It's the exact same part number. You can get them in a seven and a 10 inch. We run the 10 inch ones just to get a little bit wider sweep. We have run the seven inch ones when we've had a really dry fall and the ground is hard and we're having trouble keeping the ripper in the ground. Those seven inch points did a better job of holding that ripper down in the ground when it wants to ride up on hard ground. So we have run the seven inch ones but 90% of the time we're on the 10 inch sweeps. In the back here, big improvement on the leveling discs. So the old system had uh, more of a, sort of like a J shank that came down and we were bending those and breaking those. We've got a lot of big rock problems out here. Uh, no matter how many we pick, they just keep growing and growing. So we end up with a lot of big rocks. These are much, much better built. We've had a lot better luck with these. We've run these over 1,300 acres with some really big rocks and we have not had an issue with a single one of these. They're, they're set better at this angle so that they can trip much easier than those old style ones could so that they can ride over the rocks and the hard lumps. They do a really nice job of leveling it out before this thing gets to it. This is probably our favorite part of this machine. Our 2700 did not have a harrow on the back. We went with the harrow instead of the rolling basket because we were concerned about mud. I know some people have issues with the rolling baskets getting in the mud. They'll pack up with mud and then you have all kinds of problems. As long as you don't hit a rock when you're turning on the edge of the field, this harrow works really, really well. This one used to be straight, but we won't get into that today. So let's take this thing out and see what we think.
For those of you wondering why I'm leaving strips like this, it's because with GPS and auto steer, it actually works out nice to be able to swing a wider turn on the end of the field, and it actually helps to keep the implement centered better. So this way, you're not actually pulling against where you were last time, and when you come back in between the rows, it's actually pulling on both sides, so the implement stays centered a lot better. Now for those of you wondering why we do this type of tillage like this, we have obviously really, really heavy black wet soils. They're a high pH soil. We need to get them opened up so that the sun can heat them up in the spring. If we don't open up this soil, we'll have trouble in the spring getting in here in time to get the crops planted. And in our northern climate here, it's really, really important to get the crop in the ground as quick as we can and get as many heat units as we can accumulate throughout the summer in order to get the best yield and the best dry down in the fall. I just got a text from our local John Deere store manager. They've got a 9620 RX one mile south of here that they're going to be running demos on all day long and I'm invited to go out there and drive it. Oh yeah. You can never get enough big green machines. Big green machines.